days and nights fly past, fly past. What am I doing right now? The Buddha has you ask that question every day. Both to keep yourself from being complacent and to remind yourself that the practice is one of doing. Even though we're sitting here very still, there's still a doing going on in the mind. There's the intention to focus on the breath, the intention to maintain that focus, and the intention to keep watch over what the mind is doing as well as what the breath is doing. So meditation is a doing. Even when they talk about being the knowing or being still, there's still an element of intention, and that's what what the doing is. That was one of the Buddhist most important insights. That even when you're sitting perfectly still, with the intention not to do anything, there's still the intention, and the intention itself is the doing. It's a sankara, a fabrication. That's what we live with all the time. In fact, all of our experience is based on fabrication. The fact that you sense your body, you sense feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, consciousness, all of these aggregates. To be able to experience them in the present moment, you have to fabricate them from a potential into an actual aggregate. So this element of fabrication lies in the background all the time. It's kind of like that, the background noise of the Big Bang that's still in the background of the universe. It just doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. It's always there. And it's so consistently present that we lose sight of it. We don't realize what we're doing. And in the meditation, what you're trying to do is strip things down so you can see the very elemental fabrication that's going on in the mind. the karma that you're creating with every moment. So we're making the mind still, not simply to have a nice restful place or a nice experience of ease to soothe our stressed out minds, although that's part of it, but that's not the whole practice. The other part is to really see what's going on. On the one hand, to see the potential of human action. What can a human being do? And to see how far we can go in strip away, stripping away the unnecessary stress and suffering that comes from acting in unskillful ways. It's important that we always keep this in mind as we meditate. So remember here, we're here to understand human action, in particular our own human actions. Otherwise we expect to sit here and wait for some technicolor experiences to come and whap us up across the head, or some nice sense of glow to come develop inside, hoping that we don't have to do anything, just sit here and wait for it to come. And sometimes it does come. But if it comes without your understanding how it came or why it came, it's not all that helpful. It is restful for a while, but then it goes away. And then you have to deal with your desire to get it back, and at the same time realizing that no amount of desire is going to get it back if it's not accompanied by understanding. And you can't take human action apart until you understand the nature of action. This is really important. We like to think that we can just simply stop doing, stop doing, stop doing, and things will settle down, settle down and be calm. But that's actually more like going asleep than it is meditating. There is an element of letting go, there is an element of calming down. 
but you can't really master it until you understand exactly what you're doing to calm down. So try to keep watch on that. When you have a good meditation, when you come out of that meditation, don't simply get up, go back, have a cup of cocoa, go back to sleep. Reflect on what you did, so as to understand the pattern of cause and effect. To see exactly what you fabricated in the process of bringing the mind down to a state of calm. After all, the path is a fabricated path. It's the ultimate fabrication. I would have said of all the fabricated dharmas around the world, the highest is the Eightfold Noble Path, which is what we're trying to follow right now. But it is something put together, and you don't understand it until you see the putting together, exactly what you're doing. So always have that in the back of your mind, that you are doing something here. Sometimes it seems frustrating that the whole hour may be spent just pulling back, pulling back, pulling the mind back to the breath, the water's all, pulling it back again. And you wonder, when is the peace and calm going to come? Well, before it can come, you have to have some understanding. And so when you pull it back, trying to understand what you're doing, when it wanders off, try to understand what's happening, what you did to encourage it to wander off. In particular, trying to un under uncover all the skillful and unskillful intentions that go into this process. That makes the concentration itself more of a skill. And it also leads to the kind of insight that we want in the meditation, insight into actions. The Buddha said, discernment involves comprehending the process of fabrication, this process of action that's going on in the mind all the time. And all the basic actions are right here. There's physical fabrication that leads to action, which is the breath. Without the breath, you couldn't do any other physical actions at all. Verbal fabrication, directed thought and evaluation. Without those, you couldn't speak. And mental fabrication, feelings and perceptions. Without that, thought constructs wouldn't have any building blocks to build with. These are all the very most basic forms of activities. And so we bring them together right here when we're when we've got the mind with the breath, focused on the breath, evaluating the breath, aware of all the labels that label the breath at the same time, the feelings that come with the breath, either pleasant or unpleasant. All the basic building blocks are right here. All the basic... And again, these building blocks are not things, they're activities. The basic activity units, you might call them. They're all right here. And so you try to manipulate them skillfully. These are the things you have to bring together in order to get the mind to settle down. Otherwise it goes off and elaborates all kinds of worlds. But you keep reminding yourself to come back to this level, this level, this level where things are basic. And you still the mind. Again, it's an intentional stilling. So you can see. So there is an element of doing even in the stilling, even in the being still. But it's a doing for the purpose of knowing. Most of our doing is for the purpose of ignorance, covering up our intentions so that we can enjoy the experiences. Some people think that Buddhism is a religion of experiences. We want to have a religious experience when we come here. We want to have an experience of release or experience of peace. But it's not just the experience, it's also the understanding of action, exactly what it is to be a human being who acts. What does it mean to act? How does the mind act? What is an intention? Why does the mind have intentions? We want to look into that. We have to understand that process before we can get to where we really want to go. If you don't understand human action, you won't be able to explore the full limits of human action. You won't be able to understand how far human action can take you. So we're here to study, we're here to learn, to watch. This teaching on action is something really is peculiar to the Buddha's teachings. It's a sense of what an action is and how far action can go. Many times it's easy to say that 
All great world religions focus on having a religious experience that's beyond what words can describe. Sounds nice. Very friendly, ecumenical idea. But when you try to take the different teachings and see what they say about human action, what, what does it mean to act, and what are the potentials of human action, you see they differ, differ greatly. Some teachings say that we don't really act at all, it's just some sort of outside force acting through us. Or we do act, but our actions have no real consequences. Or that we can act, but there's lots of limitations on what we can do to lead to true happiness. We need somebody else to help us. You can't really take, put those different teachings on, on action together and make them consistent with one another. They don't jive. So this is where we have to make a choice. What kind of perception do we have as in our ability to act, and what can our actions do? Which theory of action are you hoping to place your hopes or planning to place your hopes on? That's what you're asked to commit to when you're asked to take refuge in the Triple Gem, basically, is the, the teaching on action, the teaching on karma. How far are you planning to go with your human actions? How far are you willing to push the envelope? That's a question that we all have to answer for ourselves. Nobody can push the answer on us. But just keep in mind that the Buddha said it is possible through human action to go to the end of action. In other words, to go to a dimension of the mind where there ultimately is no more intention. And he says that that's the highest happiness. Now we can take that simply as a historical curiosity, or we can take it as a personal challenge. It's up to us. At the very least, while you're sitting here and meditating, and things don't seem to be going right. Don't blame it on the weather. Don't blame it on other things. Just look at what's what you're doing. Look at the raw material you have to work with and your skill in fashioning that raw material into a state of calm. From the Buddhist point of view, that raw material comes from past actions. You can't change the fact that this is the raw material you have, but you can fashion that raw material in different ways. That freedom of choice is always available. So as you meditate and things aren't going well, look to your intentions to see what you might change. Look to your perception of what the situation is to see what you might change. When things are going well, try to maintain it well. see how you can develop it even further. This is the right effort. And this is where we also encounter that the element of intention, the element of choice directly in our own minds. So if you sit here and complain about how things aren't going well in your meditation, well, that was a choice. You, cho you choose to complain. Is that the most skillful thing to do? If it's not, try something else. You've always got that freedom. When things are going well, you can also choose to get complacent. Do you want to get complacent? Where does that take you? You can choose to manipulate things too much or too little or just right. The choices are here. And it's important that we keep that fact in mind, otherwise we get find ourselves trapped in a particular situation and can't think our ways out. Because we don't realize the range of, cho range of choices that are available. So try to keep your sense of that possibility, those possibilities, as alive as possible. So that the, the doing of the meditation does become a skillful doing, and not just a thrashing around. <laughs>